Another solid win for the Bulls and really a game they needed to win going up against an Atlanta team that just played last night in Atlanta against Charlotte. They had a bad loss against Charlotte, by the way. And for the Bulls, knowing you're going up against a team that is only a couple of games ahead of you in the standings, now just one game after tonight, and also knowing that you got a game tomorrow against the Pacers, a team for which you're now tied in the standings for the ninth seed, getting that first win in a back-to-back -back is crucial, and hopefully it gives them a spark of confidence going into the game tomorrow night in Indianapolis. But anyway, let's talk about this game. Now, not the best first quarter. In fact, it was actually a pretty awful first quarter, really for both teams, where it seemed like no one's shots were actually falling. And it was a little concerning because you would expect that from a team like the Hawks, who just played last night, but not from the Bulls, who have only played one game in an eight-day span. Granted, they were just in Paris, so you have to factor in the jet lag and time adjustment, but still, wouldn't expect them to come out so flat and only score 17 points in the first quarter, but the slow start aside. And it was nice that the Hawks shots weren't falling either, otherwise the Bulls would have found themselves in a very big hole in the first. But the Bulls played really well for the rest of the game. Yes, some sloppy moments in the third quarter, which enabled the Hawks to keep the game close and actually take the lead at one point. But overall, the defense was on point. Guys were playing hard, reading switches well, staying with their men getting in the passing lanes, and they were finally hitting their shots compared to what we saw in the first quarter. Although overall, it wasn't the best shooting night for the Bulls, who finished the game shooting 46% from the field and 32% from three, but they also held the Hawks to 45% shooting and only 30% from three. Trey Young, dude has been ice cold from behind the arc, and the Bulls did an excellent job at limiting his ability to get into the paint as well. And for the Bulls, once again, balanced scoring across the board. Excellent ball movement, turning defense and the offense on great shot selection, six players in double figures, 28 assists as a team, 13 steals as a team. I feel like that has to be a season high. I don't remember the Bulls racking up that many steals in a game this season, although I probably should have looked that up before recording this. But the point is, team basketball. Team basketball, getting everyone touches, Playing as a collective unit wins basketball games. Yes, there was some stagnant offense at times. I'm not saying the shot selection was perfect or the flow of offense in the half court was great, but for the most part, you're seeing this newly found flow to the game in which the Bulls play, where more guys are getting involved. More players are touching the basketball in every possession than what you were seeing before to start the season. And the guys are playing more for each other and having fun out there while doing it. Patrick Williams tonight, probably his best game of the season. Had a pretty bad third quarter where he was making some rookie level mistakes, passing up on shot attempts when the shot clock was running out. Like, he's still a little timid at times in games. You need to see that ending. But then he more than made up for it in the fourth quarter, hitting some big shots as well as some big defensive plays. Had a great putback on that three, a great give and go to Vucevic and Pat for the first time in a while. Finished the game with a double-double, 18 points and 10 rebounds to go along with two assists. He was also 6-11 from the field and 2 for 4 from three. DeMar DeRozan. His 1,000th career game, and he still shows up well after all the mileage on his belt. 26 points, 11 for 21, 6 assists, and of course, coming up big in the clutch for the Bulls. I mean, as great as Zach Levine is and has been most recently, you just have much more comfort knowing when DeMar has the ball in his hands at the end of the game. Not saying he's always taking the best shots either, but more often than not, he's hitting those shots in late game situations, whereas Zach has struggled a bit in clutch moments so far this season, which was somewhat the case tonight. He did have a nice drive at the end of the game to help secure the win, but he also had a bad shot and then followed it up with a driving layup that got blocked with the Hawks scoring on the other end to keep the game within striking distance. Zach still had a decent game overall, though. 20 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals. Not the most efficient, though. 7 for 17, 2 for 7 from 3. And you also compare his blocks plus minus to that of DeMar, in which Levine was a plus 1 on the night while DeMar was plus 20. Speaking of box plus minus though, Vucevic also had himself an incredible game from an impact standpoint anyway. Didn't necessarily have the most efficient night from shooting, which you would have kind of expected to an extent when you're playing against a guy like Clint Capella, who's one of the better rim protectors in the league. But Vucevic was 6 for 14 from the field, only one for five from three, but 14 points, 17 rebounds, thanks in part due to all the Hawks and their missed shots, and seven assists, just shy of yet again, another triple double and was plus 19 on the night. And then how about Alex Caruso? This probably was his most complete game of the season because the biggest knock on Caruso this year anyway has been his offense. No one will question his defense. We know he's a beast on that end of the floor and will do whatever it takes to get a stop. But tonight, 
He was getting it done on both ends, hitting big shots, making the right plays in transition, 12 points on 5 for 9 shooting, 2 for 4 from 3, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, and yet again another 3 steals. He still leads the league in steals per 36 minutes. Just incredible how active he is on that end of the floor. Oh, and I didn't even mention that rejection he had on DeJounte Murray coming out of nowhere to swat that away. Other thoughts on this game, I mean, I'm still scratching my head on why Andre Drummond isn't getting more playing time. I mean, he was a DMP the last two games, gets three minutes tonight, and in those three minutes, he brought a ton of energy, getting a couple of dunks. Not saying the guy needs to be getting 25 minutes a night, because yes, he's been having issues committing a ton of fouls when he's in the game. Doesn't really make the best decisions sometimes. But use your bigs, the few that you have anyway. Derek Jones Jr. has been great, but you need your offensive rebounders out there to give you second chance opportunities. That's what Drummond does best. I guess with the Hawks, you know, being without Hunter and Okongwu, maybe it wasn't as necessary to need Drummond out there and it made more sense to go small with Derek Jones Jr. playing some minutes of the five. But I don't know. I just, I like the energy Drummond brings when it comes to crashing the glass, which the Bulls have needed when Vucevic is sitting on the bench. Oh, and the other piece I'll say, good game for Kobe White. I know he didn't shoot the ball well, but he was actually very good in the fourth quarter, not only in hitting some key shots, but also with his defense. I cannot emphasize enough how much Kobe's defense has improved over the past few weeks, staying with his man, forcing turnovers, getting steals, playing with a ton of effort on that end of the floor. Hopefully that trend continues, although the jury is still out on whether Kobe will be in a Bulls uniform beyond the trade deadline, which by the way, I'll have more trade deadline content out this week as we're now finally starting to see some trades come through with Rui Hachimura getting moved to the Lakers today. But anyway, overall a great win. Bulls closed very well in the fourth quarter, outscoring the Hawks 33 to 22. Got to keep this momentum going. Their third straight win and their next four games are going against teams all below 500. Although they're all games on the road and the magic by the way have been playing very well they just beat the celtics tonight but either way the bulls are back at it tomorrow night against the pacers i'll have a live chat for that game you can feel free to join it if you'd like also check out my nba channel m1 hoops if you haven't already link to that is in the description be sure to subscribe to this channel as well and i'll see you guys in the next one